Okay, uh, here we are. We're under the hood of a Dodge Ram 2004. This is the 3500 with the uh, Cummins turbo diesel. What we have is a problem with tail lights, turn signals on the trailer plug, which is a whole separate circuit from the truck. So uh, as you can see here, I have an edge chip on here. We'll be removing the fuse box and replacing the fuse or the uh, relays that operate the tail lights and turn signals. Uh, these are not replaceable according to the dealer. The whole fuse box needs to be replaced, but we're going to see if we can replace them today. First thing we're going to do is obviously disconnect the uh, battery terminals. Um, so we'll disconnect those. Okay, so what we've done is uh, taken obviously a half inch wrench, just loosened uh, both sides of the uh, battery terminals, the positive and the negative. I've taken a flathead screwdriver and kind of tapped it in here to separate the uh, terminals. We'll go ahead and remove those both. Um, we want to make sure that there is no power uh, as we're going to be removing the entire fuse box. So what we've done is we've moved those away. When we get uh, to the end, we'll put some uh, dielectric grease on these, put them back in to help with uh, corrosion. Um, as you can see, I have this edge module that I need to move out of the way for us to do this. So I'm just gonna kind of set this up here, tuck it in there. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look down here and uh, there's a, uh, battery all the power for this connects right here and that you can kind of see so we're going to disconnect that but just so we got good access to see everything we will uh, take this cover off I apologize this is my first uh, video I've ever done but I couldn't find anything on the net for this so I wanted to show it obviously this is the fuse box and all of the relays that are quote quote by the dealer changeable the ones we need to get to are underneath this um, they say this is not designed to come apart um, it just needs to be replaced but I believe we can get into a couple places here uh, remove a little plastic and get this separated to uh, replace these so uh, we're gonna start disconnecting a few things and we'll see how this goes so uh, what we've done is taking a ratchet 13 millimeter socket, we've placed it down in here and we've loosened this up. Uh, like I said, this is the main power connector um, for the fuse box. This will take that nut out obviously. This will then pull off and we'll just kind of push it out of the way as well. That will get us to this main bus, uh, freeing it up hopefully to take this assembly out right here and it will be able to lift off of this uh, stud that's sticking up if all goes well. So let's see how things turn out. Okay, so uh, the next step on this is gonna be on the side here. There's gonna be a bolt that you need to take out. A uh, half inch will fit it. Takes that bolt out right here. You're also gonna have down in here a Phillips head screw, it's plastic, you take the screw out, once it's out then the plastic uh, keeper piece, looks like this, will pull out of the hole. When you've pulled that out of the hole, it's going to allow the entire fuse block to slide that way. It's connected back here by a couple uh, pieces of plastic that clip in, so as you get behind it and push it, it will slide over like that. When it slides over like that, there he is. It will then move out and become unclipped, such as this. There's going to be some connectors underneath we're going to have to get out to get this uh, fuse box out. Um, so I'm going to put some pieces down and we'll come back and uh, try and get to those and get those disconnected so we can remove the actual entire fuse box. Okay, um, as we were talking before to remove this, uh, I forgot, but down here there is a connector. Um, you need to get a screwdriver kind of in behind and pop that out. Um, once you pop that out, it will remove 
or come undone. Uh, it'll allow then the fuse box to uh, be tipped. Once it's tipped, you'll see there is um, several connectors underneath this fuse box that we need to uh, disconnect to remove it. So we're going to go about disconnecting those. Okay, as we get in there, you're going to see my hands trying to hold this up are kind of difficult. But there is a red connector or a, I don't know what you call it, safety slide. You need to lift that up. It's easier if you get in there where my fingers with a screwdriver to lift it up. Once it's lifted up, you can pull then the uh, bottom plastic tab. And when you pull that up, it's going to sound kind of nasty like that, but it then will pull up. At that point, the uh, connector will release like that, so it's no longer connected. Um, these connectors um, are pretty basic. Um, they're all exactly uh, the same style of connector. Um, I will know as I get further in if they can be mixed or not mixed, but my... Uh, theory is anytime you can label where things go it is best to do so so you get them back in the same spot they may not be able to be interchanged but just in case they are it could probably cause some major problems so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the rest of those and we'll get the fuse box out okay as you can see we've disconnected the plugs um, there are a couple that are very similar um, but different col colors so as long as you keep track of what colors came from where meaning the white uh, the black very similar plug that could be turned to go either way these three you got the gray the green and the blue uh, very similar so once we got everything disconnected we have a couple more plugs in here that are in the middle which I believe go to the trailer relays that we are trying to replace um, what we have is I believe a connector that just has to be squeezed in and pulled down um, so we'll go ahead and get those uh, not being as easy as I thought but we'll get those pulled out okay so now we have the fuse box out inside on a bench there's going to be four uh, screws similar to these that hold the uh, module here on the end then this uh, will pull off okay so we need to remove that uh, I do believe <laughs> I, and then in the top of the fuse box there's going to be these little holes where there's rubber or a plastic I'm sorry that's been melded to keep the uh, fuse box sealed closed. What we're going to do is we just put a flathead screwdriver down in there and we scrape the plastic off, hence giving us an opportunity to open this fuse box up. Okay, so once removing the plastic, uh, you've got the plastic removed from these holes, then we kind of work around the edges. It is a little difficult, especially in the corner next to where the module plugs in. Um, that is kind of difficult to get out. There's some little tabs. You can kind of see the one right there. Um, once you've popped it up and out, this should come apart. I need another hand. And what you have now is the inside of the fuse box, the three relays that are uh, for all of your trailer lights, these are not replaceable. Well, we're going to try to replace them. I don't know how well this will go because we kind of got to get some more stuff taken apart, but hopefully this will go good. I have purchased uh, online relays. Um, that I believe are the correct ones. Um, 
there you can see the number these are Tyco 20 amp 12 volt uh, VFM 21 F 42 dash S01 um, if you look at them the one has a little bit of dirt on it but they are all exactly the same um, it's my understanding and don't quote me on this one would be for right turn signal one would be for left turn signal and those of course are the brake lights as well um, the third one I believe is for the tail lights these are 20 amp relays the ones I'm replacing them with are a little bit different I will show you those now so here's the ones I'm replacing them with these are a Zettler I guess is how they say it AZ988-1AT-1 AZ988 dash dash D SEC3R these are a 30 amp instead of a 20 amp um, hoping they'll be a little more heavy duty these things are online for about three dollars a piece so to replace all three of the bad ones is about nine dollars this fuse box is seven hundred kind of ridiculous that Mopar did this but we'll see if we can get around it okay so uh, once you get all the fuses and top relays now pulled off as you can see I have them all stacked up right here what you'll do is you'll pull the top off and you'll have something like this um, this has several plates stacked together you can kind of see that uh, divert power to different areas in the fuse box we're not going to take that completely apart we're going to try and just get enough space um, sorry my fingers in the way in this area here to get to the solder joints to get these three relays off okay so ours did pull apart easy enough um, the plates came off so I did separate it completely plus I figured it'd be better to show you guys so these are where our relays are soldered on they're coated with a anti-corrosion protection which is kind of like an epoxy basically that what we're going to do is we're going to take a razor knife here and we're going to scrape some of that off so that we can unsolder these now we do have a tool called a solder sucker so you push that in um, we're going to put that down there we're going to heat the solder up and when it's hot we're going to hit this button it's going to suck that solder up leaving that joint clean you can pick these up at Radio Shack, uh, any electrical store really, not very expensive, about $12 or something like that. Um, but that will be what you need to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape and remove some of this solder so you can see what we're doing. Um, okay, so now uh, we've removed the three old relays. Um, you can see, there they are. Um, these are the spots, the positions that they were in. A um, little bit of, more of a pain than I thought, but they did come out. We're going to see if we can get a new set in there. Um, solder them in. So, uh, what we have here is the new soldered on uh, relays on the board. You can see these are 30 ampers. Um, they're soldered on. We're going to go ahead and put the fuse back, box back together the same way we took it apart and reinstall it. Okay, so what we've done is uh, slid all the um, plates back together on the circuit board, fuse board, whatever you want to call it. Um, before we go ahead and put this back into the box that it came out of, this piece, I've done something uh, that you should do. The plastic that we removed to get the box open was in three places. Um, we want to be able to secure this back closed, so um, it's hard to see, but one of the places uh, is right here. The other one, easier to see, right here. And the last one right here. If you look, what I've done is I've taken a drill and I've drilled a hole in them right in the center. I just did it by hand, it doesn't have to be that accurate. And what we're going to do is when we get this back together, we're going to put a couple screws back in there to hold this back together securely. Um, so we'll go ahead and put it back together. 
Alrighty, I didn't uh, show this real well, but we've set this back into the fuse box. Um, you can see the three screwed, the holes where we're going to put the screws, there's one. There's the second one there. And of course the third one is back in this corner. So we're in this position. These are what all your fuses clip into. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and put the very top piece back on. Um, should be pretty basic. If all goes well, this part should slide back in pretty simple. Um, the hard part is lining up all the pins that come through for the fuse and also this side, the way this side's got uh, some ports that it slides in. And again, this one corner here is going to be the most difficult. Um, you'll just have to kind of get a little tough with it. I'm going to go ahead and put that back together now, and I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, so now we have the fuse box reassembled. Um, I've mounted the module back on the end of the fuse box with the four screws. And then you can see down in that corner is a screw. Up here is my second screw. And over there is the third screw that we put in place of the plastic that we broke out to get the box apart. I'm going to reinstall all the external relays and fuses and it should be ready to go back in the truck. Okay, so what we've done is we've put all the uh, fuses and relays back in. Um, we went ahead and verified with the inside of the cover that we have everything in the correct place, everything is there. So we're going to go ahead and install this back into the truck. Okay, now uh, we're back in the truck, of course, and we have set the fuse box back in. We've uh, connected the connectors. The one thing I did notice that the bottom of the fuse box, uh, they have color-coded with some, looks like chalk or something, for which one of those connectors goes in which position. Just be careful when you push them on, uh, the actual lever that you flipped up will kind of start back down. You need to do a combination of pushing it on and pulling the lever down. Um, again, once you got them back in place, all of uh, the wires are there. Um, it's kind of hard to see. I'll try and get it up here where we can look at it. Over here, there is that red tab. Make sure once you've locked it down, you push the red tab back down to lock uh, the arm from opening up just so it doesn't open up while you're driving. Then we'll go ahead and mount this back in position. Um, once it's mounted, I will uh, hook a few of the things back up. Obviously, the main power, we'll put the cable that we disconnected from the side of the box. That hole, we pried it off. Uh, we'll push it back in that hole, the, the little uh, wire tie that was wrapped around that. Um, and we'll connect the batteries back up and we'll see if our tail lights for our trailer work. Okay, now as you see, we have uh, the fuse box completely mounted back in. We have uh, put the plug that we took out. Man, it's hard to see. It's down here. We uh, put, it, put it back in. We also put our nut back on here. We'll go ahead and close this uh, cap up. Um, this red wire, most people may not have. This is the power for the edge chip. So we're just gonna tuck that down so the wire comes out right there with the bus. And everything there should be good. We're gonna go ahead and put the cover back on that um, and connect the battery terminals back up now. So as we get kind of uh, close to testing this. We want to make sure we pick up all the tools and stuff when we're done. We'll give it a test and see how it works out. Okay, so we have the cover back on. We have the chip uh, back in place where it was mounted. We have the battery cables hooked back up. Uh, put a little dielectric grease on there just to help kind of with corrosion. And now we uh, should have all of our turn signals on our trailer and brake lights working. That's how you change them out. Uh, like I said, it's about a $670 part from the dealer. They want about $300 to install it. Uh, we just fixed it in about two and a half hours and probably 
yeah, it was only about two hours and probably about nine dollars in parts so um, that's how you do it that's what we will do is we will walk up and we will just turn on the flashers which should show both turn signals flashing on the truck and the trailer There is the right and left on the truck flashing. Now we'll go back and check the trailer. And there is both of them working on the trailer. So it looks like the repair was a success.